Oh, shoot. Hey, welcome back to Repoid. Don't mind me, I was just playing uh, the hit, classic, engaging video game, Final Fantasy All the Bravest. It's like Final Fantasy All the Bravest. It's strange. At this point in our timeline, Square Enix has released so many smartphone games. So many. A lot of them bad, a lot of them half decent, but most of them, all of them have been dead. They've been shut down. Some of them don't even last a year. And we haven't talked about any of them because they're dead. But for some reason, Final Fantasy All the Bravest is a 10 year old mobile game that's still playable. You could still download it on the App Store, not the Google Play Store, because it was shut down in 2022 on Android. So this is a whew, good thing I have an iPhone, iPhone exclusive game. It looks like an iPhone 5 game. It plays like an iPhone 5 game because that's what it is. It hasn't been updated in 10 years. It's just, it's just a mobile game that you can still play. What a weird concept. The alleged goal of this game is to celebrate Final Fantasy. It came out right at that 25th anniversary, just like Theater Rhythm, as we talked about in the last video. And the goal is to kind of create your dream team of Final Fantasy characters throughout the whole series. And by whole series, I mean 1 through 13, because once again, 14 is not here yet. Make your dream party of any of these characters the biggest party you can have in a battle in any Final Fantasy game. Isn't that cool? No! Here's how combat works. You don't get any of your favorite characters. No, not for free. Your actual party is made of generic template sprites for whatever job that unit is. Each unit has their own ATB bar. By the way, that's why it's called All the Bravest. I think they just wanted to call this game Final Fantasy ATB, and they came up with an acronym that fit ATB. So I don't know, All the Bravest? Sure. Once their bar is filled, you tap on the character and they do their attack. That is literally the only thing you do in this game. I just explained the entire combat system. You drag your finger up and down the screen to hit everybody as soon as their bar fills until the enemy dies and then you win. When an enemy attacks, he'll get rid of some of your party members. There's no health. They die in one hit, but every three minutes, your one party member will respawn. I think you know where this is going. You could wait, or you could pay money to instant revive everybody. Yeah, it's one of those pay or wait games. Time is money, so either spend money or spend time. Truly the most egregious system to ever plague the industry of video games. It really boils my blood because this game offers zero entertainment value and it has the balls to look you dead in the eyes and say, you want to continue? You better give us money or wait an hour and come back. The only thing this game does is appeal to the monkey brain side of you, the, the, the cookie clicker aspect where you're like, well, if I tap the things, I see things. There's shiny things. There's big explosions on the screen 24 seven, as long as I'm doing that. And as long as my guys aren't dead. Pay the money or wait like an hour before your full party finally gets back because you're not gonna do anything with like three guys. So you gotta wait for the full party. And then once you do that, you're just gonna lose them all again. And that's the whole experience. This game just dangles that opportunity to have your guys back the whole time. You should pay a dollar. It's just a dollar. Just pay a dollar. Get your whole party back. It's just a dollar. But something that bothers me maybe the most is that you can't choose which enemy you want to fight. And it seems to be random. So every single battle ends with the least efficient possible outcome with all enemies dying at around the same time. Any RPG fan is gonna like blow a gasket seeing that. Like, why are you attacking all the enemies evenly? That's not what you do. Cause basically that means you're getting hit with the maximum amount of damage on your team the whole time. Every enemy is active. You're supposed to, in pr pretty much every RPG, you're supposed to hone in on one guy, kill him so you're not getting hit by him anymore. It's, it's efficiency. It's what you do in an RPG. This game is just like, nah, the only thing you can do is drag that finger, baby. Just drag that finger. But then you lose all your guys, the game goes dark, 
get a little notification of like, oh, you lost your guys, you can wait, or you can give me money. And you just gotta close the app and come back later. But I got to thinking, Square has released so many smartphone games, like we said at the beginning. So many games we haven't covered because they're all dead. Why isn't this game dead? It should be. I would like it to be. The answer, I believe, is because it's not a live service, always online game. That's why these games all die, because they're running on a server constantly, and if there's not enough players, which they always die out eventually, then the game dies. They have to shut the game down because it costs money to run it. But this game, I can access it without being online. So that means it's not running on a server, which means the clock is not running on a server. The clock information that reads that you've waited three minutes to respawn a new guy, that's running locally on my device. Which means... I cheated my way through this game once I figured that out, and I'm glad I did. I don't regret that, are you kidding me? The worst thing, the thing that really angers me the most about these mobile games is that they monetize your time completely arbitrarily. The fact that I can get away with not paying money simply by changing the clock really puts in perspective how worthless this all is. The value you're getting out of this game is nothing. The money you put into getting people back gives you nothing. You're paying for nothing. But what if we did this legitimately? Maybe you can build your party better to stand more of a chance against particular enemies. No, you can't. You have no control over that. I'm telling you, I'm not lying. I explained how much input you have. You drag your finger, that's it. You do not choose your party. You don't choose which jobs are there. It's all random. You, it's nothing, the game is nothing. And it wouldn't matter anyway because the difference between the jobs may as well be nothing. The warrior attacks. The thief attacks. The white mage attacks. Everybody attacks. Nobody has a specialty, it's just damage. It's all just damage. You randomly unlock weapons, which will just apply an attack boost to whichever job it corresponds to. There's no equipment menu, it's just a thing that happens, like everything else. And you do technically level up in this game, and this only earns you additional party slots on occasion. So that explains what XP is for, I guess, but you also earn gil at the end of battle. Oh, where's the shop? What do you get in the shop? There is no shop. Not one that you use gil in. Actually, you can't use Gil. Gil is nothing. You can see the number go up. It's on the screen. You have this much Gil. You can't spend it. It's just numbers. It means nothing. Like everything else. The amount of Gil you have is nothing but a visual representation of how much time you're wasting playing this pointless game. But now we should talk about the real money you can waste. There are a total of 35 premium characters you can unlock via a loot box system. The only difference between them and the other generic characters is you get slightly higher damage and maybe a cool attack animation. They still die in one hit, and you still gotta wait for them to revive. But just to say I did it, just for the purposes of the review, I did unbox a couple. We're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna just buy one guy, see what happens. It's exciting, isn't it? Yuna! Oh my god! My girl! I got a 10 character! Awesome! Oh, we should do just one more. Orin from 10! No way! Two 10 characters! Orin, like the best 10 character. Okay, one more. 
One more. I've already won, so it doesn't matter who I get. Lock from six, okay. Not the biggest lock fan, but that's cool. Hey. Sometimes you get lucky. So there you go. I got some actual characters on my team. Two particularly that I actually wanted, so that's crazy. That never happens. But remember the selling point of this game. The selling point was to build your dream team of a, like 35 main characters. You can't do that without opening loot boxes. It's totally fraudulent. It's a complete lie. Hey kids, buy this game and build your perfect dream team. You gotta loot box it though. It's $1 per loot box and it's completely random. What a joke. The only way you can guarantee it, I think, is if you buy every character because there is no duplicates. So there are 35 characters in the game. If you buy 35 loot boxes, I think you just get all of them. So at the small cost of $35, you can have a full set of every protagonist and other party members throughout mainline Final Fantasy history. Isn't that great? Isn't that worth it? This game isn't even a very good celebration of Final Fantasy. It features bosses and music from 1, 3, 5, and mostly 4 and 6. For some reason, 2 is totally absent. As well as, you know, the rest of the 13 mainlines. Because that would require effort. That would require interpreting the 3D model characters into sprites for this game instead of just recycling the sprites from the old games. Upon beating the final boss, which is Neo X Death for some reason, you get a little ending crawl, a thank you, and that's it. That's the end. Or is it? Technically, there is some representation from the 3D games in the form of paid DLC. For four bucks a pop, you can play a few levels from Midgar, Final Fantasy VII, Xanarkand, Final Fantasy X, and Grand Pulse, Final Fantasy XIII. So, Hey, the one cool thing you can get out of this is seeing new sprites of these 3D models. It's actually kind of cool to see. I mean, look at this Sephiroth. That's pretty cool. But if you expected anything else out of this DLC, aside from bigger health bars and even more wasted time, I mean, that's on you. The bosses, Sephiroth, Sin, Orphan, each took about six to eight hours to beat waiting time that is of course I cheated and just skipped the clock ahead and beat them in minutes and you don't even get some special message for beating any of these bosses they just explode it cuts back to the map that's it you don't even get a message it doesn't say anything you just yep thanks for your money and that is everything this game has this game is so nothing that I basically described everything there is to say so let's jump on to the conclusion in a word, this game is embarrassing. Stuff like this makes you wonder how a company can expect to release it without major backlash. Or did they just not care? It's the biggest nothing sandwich I've ever eaten, and they constantly badger you to pay more for it. This game used to cost $4, which is kind of, you know, back in the day in the app store, everything was $1. That's kind of what you did. The game, download a game, it's a $1 game. But this one was like, no, $4, because this is Final Fantasy, it's a premium, it's brand, and we're a big video game company, $4. And then you get it, and it's it's this, and they, they ask for more and more, and it's $4 for each DLC thing? Are you kidding? Luckily, it has since gone free to play, but paying that $12 to see each of the DLCs, that hurt me. I felt like I betrayed my values, man. This makes me not excited to do that probably again when I review other mobile games I will probably have to just dip in and pay something just to see you know for the review playing this game is like being one of those old people who practically live at a casino mindlessly tapping at the slots waiting for something to happen but it never will but come on let's let's try to be a little positive let's not just be Another angry review. I'm sure there's tons of videos about this game of people just yelling like I am right now. I mean, whatever. There are some cool animations that play. You get to listen to some classic Final Fantasy music. It gives you a bit of that cookie clicker visual stimulation. If that's the point of the game, then that's the point, you know? It would be kind of unfair to complain that this game is not 
a good RPG, or it's barely a game? Like, uh, what if it's not trying to be? What if the point is that it's just a l silly little time waster you throw up on your phone when you're waiting online or something? I've compared it a lot to Cookie Clicker, but you know what? Nobody goes into Cookie Clicker expecting anything other than cookies that you click. But really, all this justification I'm trying to do does get thrown out the window when you realize you have a finite number of clicks. The party dies and then the game tells you to F off or pay money. I don't think Cookie Clicker does that. I mean, I've never played that. Maybe I'm wrong. If you're trying to waste time, this game literally doesn't let you waste time. You will be out of characters in like 60 seconds and then you have to close. That's why my total gameplay time, you might have seen at the beginning of this video, was like three hours and then the DLC took one hour because that is the time I've spent in-game. I'm not gonna count that outside waiting time, I'm doing something else. I'm playing the next Final Fantasy, <laughs> an actual game. So no, I'm not gonna be positive. This game is disgusting. This is absolutely the worst Final Fantasy I've ever discussed on this show, and it's not even a contest. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, because there's just no point in it. Even a Final Fantasy fan can't, like, get that much joy out of it. It'll probably just make you angry, and also, if you're looking to waste time on your phone, <laughs> newsflash, there are a billion other apps that actually let you do that. I can only hope that the other apps we encounter on this show are better, or at the very least, they last as long. Like, as bad as this game is, it was only three or four hours. If we start playing games just like this, but they cost tens of hours, we could definitely be tapping into worse territory, so the bar is there. It's not the bottom necessarily. But please, next time on Rephoid, let us return to the main course. It's the end of an era. We have been in the exploitive era of Final Fantasy for so long, so many months, so many spin-offs. This PS3 Wii DS age and we're coming to an end. It's the final game of the exploitive era. The final game of the PS3. The final game in the trilogy. So join me next time on Rephoid as we return for the last time to Final Fantasy 13.